Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is part nine in a tutorial series about implementing rollback netcode in a game built with the Godot game engine. Last time we talked about network animation player and a few do's and don'ts for using it to do rollback safe animations. It was a relatively light episode. This one is also going to be short and light, probably even shorter than the last one, but we'll see. Because today we're going to talk about doing sound effects in a rollback safe way. The core problem is you don't want to repeat sound effects you've already played when re-simulating a tick. So let's say we are currently on tick number five. Back on tick number three, there was an explosion, so we started playing the explosion sound effect. At this point, on tick number five, we're a couple of frames into it. Now let's say we need to roll back to tick number two, and then re-simulate back to the current tick. We don't want to start the explosion sound effect again. It'll sound like it started, and then started again two frames later, and effectively the player will hear it twice. If you end up rolling back and forth over and over the same tick again and again, you could actually end up playing the same sound effect up to 20 times if your buffer size was 20, for example. So we don't want to repeat this explosion sound effect that we already played on tick number three. But let's say during the rollback, something new happens because we have new input and it turns out that we should have played a new sound effect on tick number four. Well, we do want to play that new sound effect. So it isn't as simple as just not playing sound effects when rolling back. We need to only skip those exact same sounds which we already played. Luckily, the Godot rollback netcode add-on provides the sync manager play sound method to solve exactly this problem. It takes three arguments, a unique ID, the sound itself, and an optional dictionary with some extra info. The common convention is to use the node path of the node playing the sound with some sort of tag appended. In this example, it's the node path plus colon explosion. The sound is just an audio stream resource, in this example, a .wav file. And these are all the possible values you can put in the info dictionary. All of them are optional. You can omit the whole dictionary if you don't need to set any of them. But if you pass in a position, it'll use 2D positional audio. You can change the volume or pitch, and you can set which audio bus will be used. The default audio bus for sound effects can be configured in project settings for the rollback add-on. All right, so we're going to add an explosion sound effect to our demo game. It's going to be pretty quick and easy. The Godot rollback netcode add-on pretty much handles this one for us. I've already downloaded the sound file explosion.wave into the assets directory. You can grab it from the GitLab repo for this tutorial project. The link is in the description below. So first things first, we need to add a new audio bus. So we're going to click the audio tab on the bottom, click the add bus button and rename it to sound. It's super common to have a separate audio bus for sound and music so that you can let the player adjust the volumes of each of those independently on the game setting screen. Next, we're going to click project, project settings. We're going to go down to network rollback and find the default sound bus uh, setting. We're going to change that from master to our new audio bus named sound. Next, we are going to open up our explosion.gd. We're going to add a const preload for the sound resource, and then go down to our network spawn and add a sync manager, play sound, the uh, node path, plus colon explosion, and the sound resource. And that should be it. Let's play the game. We will play locally move around, drop some bombs. And that was quite a lot of explosions. I'll just drop one or two. There we go. And you can hear it's just playing the sound once. Um, it's hard to tell visually, but it's actually doing a ton of rollbacks. If we go to project, project settings, you'll see that we still have these debug settings enabled. So every single frame, it's rolling back a random number of ticks between four and 10. And when we're playing the game, you can't even tell. If we didn't have this special method from the Godot rollback netcode add-on, it would actually be repeating a whole bunch of times. So that's all I have for you today. It did in fact turn out to be a very short one. But please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or on the Snowpack Games Discord or anywhere else that I am on the internet. 
Next time, we're going to be talking about how to handle random numbers in a deterministic, rollback-safe way. It should be pretty interesting. So please subscribe on YouTube and check out snowpickgames.com for a link to the Discord and more information about me and my work. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.